Um, with that, I'll, I'll kick it over to Moinul Khan, our VP of Product Management, who's going to look at a, a real-world security incident and take us through the anatomy of that breach. So Moinul, over to you. Thank you, Rich. Um, folks, uh, good afternoon. Uh, by the way, Rich, there is a question on the chat window from David. Do you Would you like to address that first? I have not read it. Apologies. I should have been on top of this as we were going there. Q and A. Yeah. Um, okay. So the the question is around you know operational uh, uh, technology where business IT has adopted cloud solutions and uh, OT does not want to surrender control. Right. I think that you know operational technology is uh, you know a lot of these are are embedded systems um, you know with running you know legacy operating systems and and the like. You know I think that. Um, you know, that causes some, some challenges uh, themselves where perhaps the software running these systems is not, you know, updated or even the backends themselves don't necessarily uh, support cloud-based uh, cloud solutions. But I think that, you know, what Graham was talking about, right, this, this whole, you know, kind of teaming approach and, you know, bringing security to be, you know, kind of uh, uh, an equal and a collaborative team member with someone like that OT team. I think a lot of those same themes that we talked about with the application teams that in the past have been, you know, somewhat resistant to working with security, I think a lot of those approaches can be, um, you know, can be extended here as well. Uh, and and David, I'll take your name down. Uh, happy to reach out. We have a couple of uh, OT experts here at Zscaler um, that I think uh, that I think can, um, you know, really help share a lot from a lot of uh, experience with other organizations in in um, places like the energy sector. So we'll reach out, have a deeper discussion there. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to ask the question. Great, thank you, Rich. Um, what I'm going to cover in my section um, is a demonstration of a major uh, cloud data breach um, that, that we have seen in the industry. Um, I will walk you through um, how it happened, uh, but more importantly, how the, the breach could have been prevented. Um, so so let's, uh, let's first talk about the incident. Um, uh, in, in 2019 is when that, that this particular incident happened. The client lost 100 million credit card application data uh, due to cloud misconfigurations. Um, uh, again, the client is, is one of the largest credit card company in the US. Um, they were hosting their application from Amazon Web Services. Um, the problem really um, happened uh, because of a misconfigured WAF, the web application firewall, open source based WAF that they were using uh, to protect uh, their consumer uh, facing application. And uh, the attacker, uh, you know, to attack, uh, you know, uh, she did not really use uh, uh, rocket science. It was a very well-known method that she used called SSRF, server side request forgery. Essentially what it is, is uh, you can trick a server um, to, uh, to run commands when it's not supposed to, or it's not allowed to, right? Um, again, uh, very little effort, uh, but that caused a major, uh, you know, data breach in the cloud. Now, you know, you would think that this was kind of like a one-off incident, but, um, but, but this is very common across all organizations. Um, in fact, Gartner is saying that cloud misconfiguration is causing 95% of the cloud data breaches today. Right, so so let's let's dig a uh, uh, deeper. Uh, how exactly it happened? Before I talk about this, let me just um, talk about you know a couple of constructs, AWS constructs that that you need to understand. Uh, when you deploy your application, when you deploy your workload, you are doing lift and shift, or or you have a born in the cloud type of application using infrastructure. Um, AWS will give you uh, some default um, you know uh, firewall policies. They they call it security groups. Uh, and, and, and basically the security policy groups, like I said, it's firewall policy. It just says uh, who can come in and who can get, go out, right? So, so that's, that's one construct. The other one is, you know, if you are using WAF and that WAF is, is running on an EC2 instance, uh, you, you, you also have to make sure, uh, you know, the, all, all your uh, configurations are correct. You have all the guard la guardrails and so on and so forth. The third one that I highlighted with red, it's called CI/CD role. Uh, when you have uh, a workload running in the cloud, uh, you know you would end up creating, uh, you know, IAM policies, uh, IAM roles, 
uh, essentially uh, what you are basically defining is who can access to that application, right? So, 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 so these are these are some of the constructs that are very common when you are using public cloud infrastructure. Now, in this particular case, what exactly happened? Uh, there was no problem on the security groups. Um, the the security groups allowed only uh, 443 communication, which is you know. Uh, you can make an HTTP call uh, because again, it's a consumer facing application. The front end needs to be open. And, and so, so from security group perspective, there was no problem there. On the WAF side, um, they had a, a misconfiguration there uh, because um, you know, the, the WAF, uh, one of the component was, was configured with a lower security version. Uh, it's called IMDS. It's basically you know, when you make an HTTP request, IMDS returns all the metadata for that EC2 instances for that compute environment. And, you know, the version one was configured, version was has vulnerability, it doesn't really challenge the, the requester. Version two should have been configured here. And then the last problem that they had is, they had a CICD role. The CICD is, is really for your DevOps, it's for your software engineers. When you create a CI CD role, that role should be attached to CI CD tools like you know, Terraform, Jenkins, and uh, you know, Ansible, and so on and so forth. But by mistake, they attach that CI CD role to F. And, 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 and that's a huge uh, misconfiguration because, because of that, um, the attacker ran a simple command. They got through the security groups and they basically asked WAF to return the secret key so that they can become the part of the CI CD role. That was as simple as that. And then when, when they become the part of the CI CD role, they had access to their S3 buckets where the company is storing 100 million credit card application information and then attacker just collected profits, right? Um, so again, simple misconfiguration, but, but the breach was massive, right? So, you know, Graham, uh, Greg, you know, they talked about, you know, segregation is important. Um, you know, uh, Graham also talked about there are lots of, uh, you know, the, the tools have gotten, gotten be better. Greg talked about automation. Uh, this is exactly what we are trying to do with our, with Zscaler, CSPM and CIM. CSPM stands for Cloud Security Posture Management. CIM is looking at overprivileged permission. So, you know, if the CSPM and CIM uh, that the security policies are in place, you know, CSPM will make sure that you have the right security group configuration. You do not have a publicly exposed bucket. You do not have database port, SSH port open. CSPM will also, also make sure that your WAF configuration, everything is good. And then with CIEM, we are looking at workload and permissions and identity and access management policy. And whenever we find an overprivileged permission, the tool will automatically kick in and take remediation action, right? So, so you know, just to kind of like go deeper on CSPM, cloud security posture management, what we have done is we have built uh, about, you know, close to 3000 predefined policies. Why? Because, you know, Rich and, 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 and Greg both mentioned automation is important, but the tool is simple tool. It's an API based security tool you onboard your public cloud accounts. As soon as these accounts get onboarded, we fire up these 3000 signatures. We get a snapshot of your current configuration. And then we compare and contrast that configuration with cloud security best practices like CIS benchmark, NIST cybersecurity framework. We have also built 15 different compliance frameworks. So we should be able to tell you, um, you know, what your security compliance posture is against PCI DSS or HIPAA or GDPR, SOC, ISO, and so on and so forth. Um, the CIEM is doing very similar things. You know, as soon as these accounts get onboarded, we discover identities, we discover all cloud assets, we look at entitlements, who has access to what. And then, you know, using machine learning technology, we figure out what are the overprivileged identities in your environment? Uh, you know, once we figure this out, we prioritize the risk. Um, you know, there is this concept of high risk, medium risk, and low risk, and then auto remediation kicks in, right? Um, so once again, 
you know, it's not complex technology from deployment perspective. It's not a firewall. It's not a web proxy. You don't change the network security uh, settings. All it is is an uh, you know API based tooling that automate uh, that whole process for you. It's a continuous um, you know security assurance, right? Um, so let me uh, let me take literally a minute or two, kind of like walk you through the the the, the product itself. Uh, when you log into CSPM, um, you know, depending on the persona, uh, you know, uh, there are different type of visibility that has been built natively. Uh, so you can start with asset security, where your assets are, which geolocation they are at, which ones are high, um, high, uh, high security, uh, where the high security problems are, low security, moderate, and, and, and so on and so forth. If your persona is a compliance person, uh, persona, then right off the bat, and the tool should be able to tell you what your posture is. Uh, InfoSec, um, SecOps, they, they really like the idea of focusing on uh, you know, critical risk. So the tool has this concept of risk likelihood versus risk, um, uh, risk impact. Right off the bat, we, we should be able to tell you these are the 76 problems or perhaps 10 high priority problems that you should really pay attention to. And, and um, you know, from, from the breach perspective, the, the client breach that I was talking about, this is exactly where that secret sauce is. Uh, as you can see, we have built about, you know, 3000 predefined signatures, predefined policies. You don't have to worry about creating custom policies uh, and, and, and all that stuff. When you go to AWS networking, this is where we are checking all your firewall policies and, and all your security groups, right? Uh, you hop over to the CIM dashboard. Uh, the CIM, again, it's, it's all about, uh, you know, who are the users, uh, you know, how many human users have uh, permissions to connect to your workloads. At the same time, we are talking about non-human users, typically hundreds of API-based applications are connected. So you need to pay attention to it. And, and from that incident perspective, um, you know, on the CIM, we have a signature. Uh, that is exactly focusing on that particular problem that I, uh, I, I demonstrated. Uh, this is where uh, you know, we are looking at uh, EC2 settings and we are saying uh, the version uh, you know, has the vulnerability itself. It needs to be a higher version, IMDS version so that you know, it's properly configured. And then the, the excess overprivileged access permission that the incident had uh, you know, again, these are these are some of the things that we are building with machine learning technology. For example, in this particular case, uh, it's detecting this user called Amos. Uh, he has access to this environment through these roles and policies, and and that would have been you know highlighted uh, on that particular incident. We would have catched that, uh, saying that the CI/CD role uh, should not be attached to uh, a web application firewall, right? So, so that's that's really the quick demo. So before I end end the demo, let me kind of like reinforce that, um, uh, reinforce one more time uh, is that cloud misconfiguration related to IAS PaaS identity is is very common. It's happening across the board, and you know uh, everyone you know that are using this uh, public cloud infrastructure should pay attention to it. CSPM CIM technology again, simple technology that can really address these use cases, automate the whole process. Uh, you know, CSPM and CIM, it's, it's, it's more like your doorknobs. Um, if you have a house, uh, you know, you need to, when you go out, you need to make sure uh, that your door is locked, uh, as simple as that. Uh, and, and everybody uh, should consider uh, one of these tools uh, to make sure that their workload is fully protected. With that, um, you know, over to Kavita. Thank you, Moinol. Um, and uh, many thanks to Greg and Graham for sharing all your real world um, perspectives, journeys, um, and stories. I also wanted to thank Rich for moderating the great conversation. It was an extremely dynamic conversation today. And Moinol, obviously, for diving into uh, the uh, anatomy of the breach. Um, from Zscaler, I would like to extend my gratitude to all of you for attending today's session. Um, if you have missed any part of today's session, um, we would or would like to revisit it. Um, we will have a recording available uh, at cxosummit.zscaler.com um, tomorrow. Uh, but let's continue this conversation. I would really like you to join me and your IT leadership colleagues 
in the private Zscaler CXO community LinkedIn group that we have created. Um, we will be sharing um, an invitation for you to join us there. This is a non-sales, non-marketing, practitioner to practitioner, uh, peer group uh, on LinkedIn where you can um, exchange ideas, best practices and engage with your peers. Um, and from all of us here at Zscaler, we would like you to take care of yourself, stay safe and healthy. And we'd love to see you at episode two on July 1st, where we will be discussing a very interesting topic around reducing the IT carbon footprint and to make a case for green security. Until then, take care and goodbye.